Welcome to part four of our exploration of consciousness. We're going to look at drugs now, and we're going to first look at addiction and dependence. Um, so first of all, when we talk about drugs, let's start defining a couple terms. Um, a psychoactive drug, a psychoactive drug is any chemical substance that, and it's got to alter your perception and mood, okay? So a psychoactive drug is anything that alters your perception and mood. So there's a lot of things that are psychoactive drugs that we may not have think. So a lot of times when we hear the word drug, we think of hard drugs like cocaine, heroin, street drugs like that. But a psychoactive drug is literally anything. I mean, you could take uh, drugs for students who have ADD are taking a psychoactive drug. It's affecting their mood, right? Um, if you're, if you have a trouble, uh, you know, middle-aged man, erectile dysfunction, they're taking Viagra. That's a chemical. It's altering your perception and mood, right? Same things for, for, for women with that. And so psychoactive drugs, we, we have this opportunity to take so many of these uh, drugs throughout the day, the, the legal way. Um, there's so many legal ways to do it. You know, it's, uh, almost just as scary as uh, all the hard drugs that are out there that are, you know, that are illegal. So you have to keep that in mind when we're talking about dependence and addiction. There's, um, that can happen to anybody. Um, when we're dealing with drugs, you got to learn about a thing called tolerance. And so tolerance is when your brain actually changes its chemistry, chemistry change. So there's a chemistry change in your brain that says, hey, I don't like the feeling of this, or we don't need to do this. So it says, we don't need to, uh, let's stop reacting to this because we keep getting all this alcohol, or we keep getting all this whatever. And your brain says, okay, I don't need as much of it, or let's change that chemistry so that if after two beers, it doesn't affect you anymore. And so you got to take more, right? So like true alcoholics can drink a ton of alcohol before they, you know, start acting drunk. And so that's, you know, that's an example of tolerance. The more you take the drug, your brain chemistry changes, and it becomes longer and longer. Now, the damage to your body can be just the same, right? Alcoholics oftentimes have liver damage, right? Because your liver doesn't know that your brain says, hey, we can take more of this before we're affected here. Your liver is still trying to do its job, but um, the brain is changing the chemistry and the rest of your body is still trying to keep up with it. So that's a lot of times when you get addicted, that can be a big problem. After you uh, are addicted to something, we haven't talked about addiction yet. We'll talk about that in the next slide. But after you do have a lot of a drug, you can go through what's called a withdrawal. And a withdrawal is where you can have uh, experience uh, physical pain or psychological pain. Um, you can have headaches. Like you can... Uh, uh, a psychoactive drug can actually be uh, caffeine, right? It affect, definitely affects your mood. And if you've ever seen somebody who's not had their coffee in the morning or, you know, usually drinks a lot of coffee and hasn't had much caffeine for the day, right, they can be moody, right? And so they're, and they can have a headache. I don't know if you've ever heard of somebody having like a caffeine headache, but that's uh, quite common. And it's uh, a result of your body's uh, suffering from a withdrawal because it's becoming dependent, dependent on that particular drug. Um, and there's different types of dependency. You can have a physical or a psychological dependence. Uh, physical dependence means your body like physically needs it. Like you're going to get a headache if you don't. So like you can get addicted to caffeine and you'll have this uh, physical withdrawals when you, when you quit having it. Uh, psychological dependence can be something like um, Smoking can have a psychological dependence and a physical dependence. So the nicotine in there, you can become physically dependent to it, which a lot of times smoking has to do with psychological dependence. It has calming effects and whatnot. And so the uh, psychological calming your nerves, you become dependent on doing it. I keep mentioning addiction. So what, what is addiction? Um, actually, addiction is, oops, addiction is, the word you got to look for is compulsive. It's got to be compulsive, which means you just feel the strong desire to get it. And regardless of any adverse behavior, so regardless of adverse, uh, not behavior, effects, you need it. All right, so when you're addicted to something, whether there's adverse effects, you don't care. 
you still need it. And so you know, right, people who are smoking, most of them know that the smoking is not helping their body, it's hurting them. But they're, they're addicted to it, and so they have this compulsive need for it, this strong desire, regardless of any adverse effects that it might have. Now, there's some uh, myths about addiction that we need to go through. Um, the first one, myth one, is that addictive drugs quickly corrupt. The true fact of the matter is, um, people who uh, try even try cocaine, right? So cocaine, heroin, these are really strong drugs. These are drugs that you become highly addicted to. Even people, well, let me try to fix that here. All right, I don't know what happened, but the screen kind of went crazy on me. So let's see if we can continue this. But uh, like, even if you have cocaine or some other sh uh, really strong drug, you're probably not going to become addicted to it after one use. It requires constant use. Uh, research is showing, you know, somebody who's tried uh, initially tries cocaine or even heroin, ten years later is not addicted. Most people are not. Only maybe ten percent are uh, become addicted. So um, addictive drugs quickly corrupt. They don't. Um, it's not good. But they can't. They don't necessarily happen really quickly. Two uh, myth number two is that addictions cannot be overcome voluntarily. Therapy is required. Uh, this is uh, you know a bit of a, a controversy because there's lots of people who say like um, different types of addiction are diseases and we need to treat them uh, medically. But what that does is it takes away the responsibility and the power of the individual. That the individual feels powerless because they don't feel like they can conquer the addiction themselves. And oftentimes, people conquer the addiction themselves. The vast majority of smokers who quit smoking, quit smoking by themselves. They didn't need um, therapy or somebody to help them quit smoking. They, they quit themselves. And so when you think of it of an addiction as a disease and it needs to be treated with therapy or medically, then you a lot of times take that power away from the individual and the responsibility that the individual can have for, for themselves. And so it's a bit of a tricky subject, um, which kind of leads us into myth three in that we can extend the concept of addictions to cover not just drug dependencies, but a whole spectrum of repetitive pleasure-seeking behaviors. Seeking, that should be a K. Seeking behaviors like uh, eating and video game playing and getting online, doing, uh, you know, going to... Uh, social media sites, right? So there's some research uh, kind of going both ways on this. And um, while you, while the addiction as a disease model, which is uh, some people's camp, can undermine the individual roles, right? Can undermine the person's personal responsibility and the personal role of the addiction to help themselves out. There is research to show that um, people can become like so addicted to social media that they'll do it. Remember what we said addiction was a compulsive regardless of adverse effects. Use social media and just feel the desire to log in and get in despite, you know, spending time with their family and these negative things. So, you know, some certain social situations and social behaviors may be able to classify as disease, but there's, uh, there's the jury's out, there's a debate and you know how much is it. And so there's a lot of research going into, you know, what role does the person play in addiction? What role does, uh, therapy and um, how can you, you know, best help the person. So that's about it. Next time we'll be talking about uh, the types of drugs. Thank you.